to watch the results of the Bradford by-election, George Galloway simply romped home with a massive victory, and what a shock that was. Uh, two things struck me as I watched his speech after being elected. He referred to his victory speech as being the Bradford Spring. By this, of course, he's uh, comparing it with uh, the Arab Spring. Soon afterwards, George <laughs> became very confused and thought that he had won the Blackburn seat. Oh <laughs> well, I'm sort of glad he's not my MP. It's no secret that George is very pro-Muslim. He was the one who went to Saddam Hussein and said something to the effect, I salute your bravery. <laughs> That's the kind of guy that George is. Firstly, it struck me that people are getting a little bit fed up with the main political parties in our country and all the hypocrisy that goes with them. I mean, look at the latest fiasco over the rising cost of hot pasties that are so popular with us working class folk, while the taxpayer subsidises the grub that's eaten by the MPs inside of Parliament to the tune of 80%. Then we had another fiasco over petrol, and that caused chaos everywhere. The government itself caused this. Now we're told that they're going to try and stop smokers from smoking in their own homes or in their cars. The thing that strikes me about that is how on earth are they going to police this? Are they going to stick smoke alarms in our homes or... Uh, some kind of a bug in our home or are they going to do something far more sinister like get children to report on their parents? That is very, very frightening. The government now say they want to access our personal computers. You know, George Orwell's 1984 is here, folks. It really is here. It's no wonder, when you think about it, that people will vote for oddballs like George Galloway because they're sick of the mainline parties. Another thought struck me. Uh, George is very pro-Muslim and Bradford is known as a Muslim town. Is this the beginning of some kind of a takeover in our big cities? Bradford first, where next? Coventry, Leicester, Birmingham? I'm not against Muslims. I've worked with many of them as a prison chaplain and I even began to learn to speak Urdu. I got on very well with the Muslims. But my question is this, isn't this England of ours supposed to be a Christian country? You know, I'm reminded from studying the Old Testament that whenever Israel turned their backs on God, God God caused outside nations to take over them and oppress them. And it was only when they turned back to God that they became free again. Now we know that God doesn't change. In Malachi 3.16 it says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Isn't this what is happening to our country? That we've turned our backs on our Christian God and now look at what is happening to our country? Doesn't that strike you as being odd? How many no-go areas are there in Bradford? But not only in Bradford, also other cities across our nation. Our economy is in dire straits. Our young people rioted across the country. Our hospitals are not really safe to be in as a patient. Our political leaders are becoming dictators. What a mess this once fine country is becoming. Could it possibly be anything to do with our rejection of Christ and Christian values? God stated he cannot be mocked without there being consequences. What a country our children are going to grow up in and our grandchildren also. What kind of a future will they have? I was talking the other day with a friend of mine and he said to me, John, our generation has seen the best of England but God help the next generation. I had to agree with him. I'm doing this blog during Easter week. Those of us who still believe in the true gospel of Jesus Christ still have cause to celebrate. 
even though our, co our country is falling apart. Regardless of what is happening in the world or in our country, our faith in Christ must remain firm. Our message must never change because the truth cannot change. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, gave his life as a ransom for all of us. This is the truth. Those of us who believe this truth will never perish. Those who oppose this truth will eventually perish. I want to encourage everyone today to keep your faith firm in Christ. No doubt many of us will be attending church over Easter. My advice is listen to the truth that you hear. Drink in that truth about what took place during this time 2,000 years ago, how Jesus died and rose again from the dead. But not only did he die and rise from the dead, but he promised that he would return to rescue his church from this evil world. If that's not good news, I don't know what is. So whatever your feelings or your fears may be about our sick society, cling on to Christ, folks. He's the truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come unto God but through him. Men are not the truth, and men do not contain the truth. But Jesus will always be the truth. Have a great week, folks. Take heart in what I've been saying and celebrate our faith this Easter. God bless you all. Bye for now. Bye. Lord, examine my motives. Lord, look into my heart. I could not think of just taking one step without you.